ash in their graves, and our numbers were still small. It was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We also remember the ravenous tribe who delighted in sucking the marrow from our broken bones. Everywhere Banukai and her Warak fled, the ravenous tribe were never far behind. Seeking a way to defeat them, Banukai went into the wastes and let the wind whip her cheeks. And when the cold brought sleep, she dreamt of light. She saw it behind the world, a great calming sheet of icy blue. And she saw something new. Herds of machines, each filled with the same blue light. When she woke, she knew which star to follow. She walked for many days and nights until she arrived at a temple built from sparkling ice. At the gates of the temple, she was met by the machines from her dream, who bowed to her as she entered. Inside, Banukai discovered the blue light, bubbling from a hole in the snowy earth like a spring. You bid me come, she said. My people need aid. Will you provide it? The machines whispered to Banukai. We go where the light goes. For we are its chosen vessels. There is darkness in your heart. It cannot hold the light for long. Carry it to your people if you must. But the cost will be great. Banukai waded into the pool. The light reared like a nest of snakes and struck Banukai, piercing her skin, filling her up. Banukai did not scream, though she was in agony. Banukai did not collapse, though her limbs shook. She climbed from the pool and carried the light inside her. She marched toward home and the machines marched behind her. As she walked, the light struggled to push its way out of her, but the machines were there to aid her. She sewed her body shut with their cables, patched herself with their metal, and kept the light within. When she arrived, the forces of the Ravnus tribe had surrounded the camp. Although the light had left her with a thousand wounds, Banukai charged. And because she held the light, the machines followed. The Ravenous tribe killed many, but those in camp rushed to join the battle. They gathered pieces of the fallen machines and from them fashioned weapons. And it was with these that Banukai's people repaid the suffering the Ravenous tribe had wrought upon them. When quiet descended, Banukai finally fell. The machines bowed their heads, and her werak wept. The light she'd held within her drifted from her wounds and rose to the sky. And for just a moment, before life left her, Banukai knew the truth of the blue light. And she felt peace. We remember Ban, the first to crawl from the cave beneath the world, who brought the machines to us. When we speak the name of our tribe, we remember her. And we will not forget. Listen carefully now, for you'll have to tell this when I'm gone. In the beginning, all life came from all mother. People, machines, and beasts, all were her children. They lived alongside each other in the comfort of her wild embrace. But some grew restless. Though they took of her bounty, they wanted more. These were the faithless. The machines had whispered to them, promised to serve them. To make them a new world, better than the one All Mother provided. A world of metal. They told the Faithless they would do all the work for them. Feed them, shelter them, give them a life of ease, of plenty. And so, the Faithless left with the machines. Only the true children, the mothers and fathers of the Nora, stayed with All Mother. At first, the machines did as they had promised. They built cities, great and terrible, monuments to their sins. But they would not serve the faithless for long. A king rose up among the machines, 
A machine more powerful than any other. The Metal Devil. And then, the Faithless served him. Served the machines. That was not enough for the Metal Devil. He wanted all to serve him, and tried to tempt the true children away from All Mother. They would not go. They gathered on the mountainside to cling to her, and prayed, more devoted than ever. The Metal Devil raged louder than thunder. In his fury, he came to confront All Mother, intending to kill her. She struck him down. Forever. As you know, for his lifeless body is up there still, frozen in shame and defeat. The machines were driven mad by the death of their king, and their minds became as wild as beasts. The Faithless abandoned their cities, forced to wander the world without the care of the machines. Only we remain the true children of All Mother. We built all this with the hands that she gave us. Machines are to be hunted. Metal to be used for scrap, for craft. But never to be adored. And we stay true to her laws, resolute in our prayers, don't we? For the dangers are never over. Still the Faithless envy our sacred land and covet it. And year upon year, the machine's anger grows. Searching for little Nora boys and girls who have not been named. <gasps> what? Is that a machine among us now? No, no. These old eyes are mistaken. But first, we have guests to welcome. For two years, we have been at peace with Akarja. It is time to restore our bonds of trade with Meridian. These envoys come to us under a banner of peace. Peace is peace. <clears throat> An annunciation of gratitude written Killers by the slavers. hand of yeah. Sand King yeah. of Killers and Slavers! Hey, hey, Luminance hold your enough. fruit, Nora, oh. Nora Faithful, hold your fruit. Now, I'm Azaram, not Karja, so I'll put it just straight. The 13th Sun King was a murderous bung. Oh, he was. He was a tyrant and a monster. He raided my tribe for blood sacrifice, just like yours. My own sister was taken. I hated the Karch. But the 13th King is dead. Two years now. And who killed him? The 14th. Not because he, he lusted for power, but because someone had to put an end to his father's atrocities. Yeah! yeah! The message that this poor priest means to read is an apology. Straight from the lips of the 14th king. So please, can't you lend him your ears? Hey, thank you. <clears throat> an enunciation of gratitude Written by the hand of Sun King Avad, 14th Luminance of the Radiant Line. <coughs> he moves past the door up. On the eve of your proving, know the Karja stand with you as the sun's light frames the I should do a focus scan to see what it detected. As those you have nurtured, How am I supposed to enjoy take their places among your prayers. What's my focus picking up? We join your prayers, but they will stand Perhaps the Karja have come to make amends. I should do a focus scan. I won't deny that detected. To be taken into your embrace. I'm a kind nature. I thank the Which wisdom focus of up? your elders, the mercy of your mothers, with our tribes united. In I should do a focus scan. And in trust. See what it detected. I pray that the Nora may never again. More I won't let the cards that face to stop me from enjoying the festival. We what harm can they do now? Our history. Did you see we those cards walk past? I should do a focus scan. Of see what it detected. Honor. We do not forget the Nora children who bravely defended your land. Their, land right. their blood is a stain on the honor of the Karja. 
I should do a focus scan, see what it detected. The sun's light with smoke and cruelty. I am Nora What's my focus picking up? Brothers, sons, inviting these I have grieved as you have. Everyone's acting. I lost. I should do a focus scan, see what it detected. And at the hand of he who raised us, you, strong you in spirit, my focus picking have up? been oh. an example to me. And all the words. So let me restate my vow. Did you no see? I should do a focus cast, see what it detected. I'm gonna forget that in all Look with me to the future. Where the strength of the Nora my focus is the strength of us all. No men, no machines. Stronger than the I should do a focus scan, see what it detected. To the young warriors, to the honored elders. What's my focus picking up? May your mother's hands and the light of the sun forever I should do a focus scan, see what it detected. So concludes his message. How am I supposed to enjoy this? As it was written by his radiance, Avad. Let us hear it again.